Hello and welcome to my DIY. I'm going to be doing a blue room makeover. Um, I used royal blue, but then I just changed my mind and I used a different kind of blue. This is the paint color. It turned out beautiful. I wanted it to match with the gold frames that I'll be making. I painted the entire room and I started with the edges because I wanted it to be clean and neat. I used old frames um, that I had and I just took out the back with a screwdriver and I reused them. I went outside and took my spray paint and painted them gold. After I finished painting them, I mounted them on the wall, which was easy peasy lemon squeezy. The middle one, I added another frame because I thought it looked a little bit awkward, so I added another frame. I absolutely love the color contrast. Next, I took floating shelves and I decided to install them myself. Um, this is the um, back part of the floating shelf that you put in. It was a little bit of a struggle, but I managed to do it. I measured up the wall and I used uh, just a white pencil or a white eyeliner. After that, I drilled in the holes that would hold the floating shelf. I drilled three holes as there were three holes in the floating shelf itself and then I just nailed the parts of the um, nail into the wall using my drill. I then drilled the part, the back part of the floating shelf that's going to hold it up. And there you see all done. Voila! I then took some mirrors that I got very cheap um, and I mounted them on the other side of the wall so that it matches beautifully. I went and then I bought some gold wrapping paper. I cut it out to size, I glued it, and then I put the other side of the wrapping paper around old paint, or rather not reused paint um, buckets that I used from the paint on the wall. I then took rocks and put them into the paint uh, bucket, and this was to hold the plant because it was quite heavy and um, to make sure that it's sturdy and in place and the floating shelves are strong enough to hold it. That's the end result and it looks absolutely beautiful! Just to make things a little more glam, I added lights at the back and this is the final result. I love it! Hope to see you soon! Bye! Here's a quick and easy DIY. I'm taking one of these fun planks from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to put this on a paintable surface. And using my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster, we're going to give this a nice coat of paint. And this doesn't need to be perfect, it's totally okay if the wood shows through. Now let's set that aside to dry. I found these letters at Walmart and it spells out the word EAT. And I'm just going to tape these down onto a paintable surface so it's easier to paint them. Let's grab our Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and I'm going to go ahead and paint the tops of these letters and around the edges as well. So I found this reusable self-adhesive stencil on Amazon and I really like the pattern on it. And I've used it in a few different crafts and I want to use it on this one as well. Now I don't want to use the stencil on the full letter itself, I'm only going to use it on pieces of the letter. Now using my chalk paste by Redesign in the color Vintage Lace, we're going to take our squeegee and just squeegee that paint over the top of the stencil. Now let's just repeat this step until we have a nice design on each one of these letters. And I love how bold this is turning out. I just think this black and white is just a fun look together. For our final step, we're going to use some Jolene finishing wax. And using a lint-free cloth, we'll just rub that wax over the top of the paint. And now for the fun part, let's put this all together. We're gonna put the board out that we painted at the beginning and add the letters on top. And I'm using my straight edge to make sure that everything is in place where I would like them. And then what you'll see me do here is I'm going to take my straight edge and I'm going to place it down kind of like a line so that way I can just take the letters and put my wood glue on the back with a little bit of hot glue and then place them back exactly where I wanted them on the board. 
Then we would just repeat this step for the other two letters until everything is glued into place. Now I did not move this sign for probably two hours because I wanted to make sure that wood glue really stuck onto the sign before I did my next step. Now for our last step, we're going to reattach the original hanger that came on the sign. And once we get that reattached, I'm going to take some hot glue and hot glue that triple bow onto the top. And here is what our sign turns out to look like. I just love the details in the stencil on this. And I think this is just a unique farmhouse piece that you could put in your kitchen or dining room. And thank you so much for watching. Please remember, craft more, stress less. Hello, Creative Gems. Welcome to Creativity. I'm Sandy. Today we're crafting with Dollar Tree chopping mats and napkin holders. These napkin holders have a chrome finish, which will help elevate the look of the home decor piece we'll be making. To start, I've taken one chopping mat and curl it slightly so we can insert one end into the front of one of the napkin holders. I'll then slip the chopping mat through until the edge is flush to the back of the napkin holder. Then I'll repeat the exact same steps on the other end. Once the entire chopping mat is flanked by the two napkin holders, we'll want to secure it into place by applying some hot glue. The hot glue should only be applied where the chrome napkin holder and chopping mat meet. Once you have applied the hot glue to each section, hold the chopping mat and napkin holder together for a few moments to allow the hot glue to cool and dry. Then repeat on the other end until everything is secured in place. Next, we're going to add some embellishments. I have a strip of this beautiful silver rhinestone ribbon that I will apply onto the ends of the chopping mat. I found this trim on Amazon and it's one of my most favorite embellishments to craft with. It's self-adhesive, so no glue is required and it's flexible and can be cut to size. You can apply a wider piece if you prefer, but I'm going to opt for a second piece of embellishment to complement this trim. Here I have some silver metallic pearl bead stickers I found at the dollar store. I'm going to cut just enough to fit the empty space that I left. And when one end is done, I'm going to apply the same embellishments onto the other end. And if you guessed that we were making a wall sconce, you are correct. I placed two battery operated LED puck lights from the Dollar Tree inside. The first one is sitting upside down on the top napkin holder, and the second one is sitting right side up on top of the bottom napkin holder. This wall sconce is bright and perfect to hang along a corridor or a stairway. But if you're thinking it's looking a little plain, I've got another design idea. We can take the same wall sconce and adorn it with hanging crystal garland pieces. I found these garlands on Amazon and love using them because these have a metal jump ring in between each crystal piece, which means you can easily adjust the length of each garland to suit your needs. Here, I've measured out how long each garland needs to be and I'll hook the jump ring onto each of the napkin holders. I'll continue to do that until the entire chopping mat is covered with the hanging crystal garlands. And here's the second look for our chopping mat wall scones. I think that this one has a much more luxurious look and even looks similar to ones you would find online, but at a fraction of the price and with all the same glitter and glam. And here's what the wall scones looks like turned on after dark. It casts beautiful shadows on the wall and really enhances the wall space. Hi new friends, my name is Lacey and welcome to our space, Lacey's Space, a place where you and I connect over all things DIY. I want to thank Yuta Essentials for allowing me to share one of my favorite DIYs which were the solar light giant flowers. For this we're going to be using organza, a Dollar Tree solar light, some floral stems, and I have a little pink silicone mat in order to protect my table and some E6000 glue. So right here what I'm doing is taking my floral stems and shaping them into different size like teardrops. I'm putting E6000 glue on one side of it and then adhering it to the organza. After that, after it is completely dried, I turn around and cut them out with some little like fingernail scissors so I can get really close to them. I made two kind of different sizes. These right here are smaller ones and then the next batch will be larger ones. I'm showing you that the solar light activates from the top. So we want to make sure that we are going to adhere these with some Gorilla Hot Glue to the side of the black portion of this solar light and make sure we don't cover the bulb. I put nine smaller ones around first 
and then I'm using nine slightly larger ones and I'm placing those in between the smaller ones. You can see that I left long stems of the floral stems at the bottom so I can use some electrical tape and cover them up. Then after I get this on and you can see I did a whole bunch of it, all this footage is sped up just so you can see what I'm doing. But if you want to see the full video, it will be on my channel. I am going to then take some leftover leaves because we know as crafters, we don't throw anything away and glue those on to cover up the excess floral stem. I'm gluing them upside down so they look right side up on this giant flower. I do two layers of those and then I use more electrical tape to cover them up to make sure that they stay. And if you've ever been on my channel before, you know I'm extra. So even though this is beautiful on its own, I decided to place on a little plastic butterfly on one of the petals. My house is blue and so I picked a blue one and I am adhering this on with some Gorilla Hot Glue. I live in Michigan and so it works perfectly fine for me to use hot glue but if you live in a warmer climate you might want to pick something a little stronger but look how beautiful it is in my yard in the daytime and at night it is gorgeous and I absolutely love it. I'd like to thank you to Essentials again for giving me this opportunity to share with you and if you'd like to check out more of my DIYs I'm Lacey Space here on YouTube and I will catch you in my next video. Well, hello, my beautiful people. Welcome back to my channel. This is Christine. I'll just be changing or setting up this uh, tear tree. I got this in Michael's for $6.99. This was a steal, guys. I love it. All I'll be doing to this is just staining it. And now I'm ready to apply my stain. I took some Waverly Antique Wax. And then I use the paintbrush to, or to apply the wax and then the baby wipe to just wipe that off a little bit and spread it evenly. And now they're done, I'm going to apply some Mod Podge to seal it. At this point, I only had planned to just stain it, leave it plain, nothing else but you'll see what I do with it at the, the end of this project. Then I decided, no, I needed to give something to stand on because it was laying too flat down on the table. I initially decided to add three of these little cubes as legs, but then I realized it needed a fourth. And so I got my fourth and I stained them as well. Now I'm going to apply them with the wood glue and some hot glue. Now this is where if I had decided earlier that I was going to do this, then I would have just separated that little section where I'm going to be applying the feet and not stain that area because sometimes when you stain or paint prior to applying your wood glue and hot glue, there's very little adhesion there. So whatever you're putting on on top of that stained surface is going to fall apart. But here I left one section of the blocks unstained so that the raw wood could at least be applied to the bottom of that. Now I took my drill and I'm removing the screw cause that was screwed down in there very tight. So I had to use the drill to get that out. Screw that out and now I'm applying this middle piece and I'm gonna use the drill to screw that. A drill is not necessary for this. You just need a screwdriver. And then I apply the second piece and that piece I screw from the top and screw that in. And this is where I told myself this was done guys, done. But then I looked at it and I s said to myself, oh no, you need to put some sticker, some transfer on there. So my friends, thank you for hanging out with me today. This video is a part of the UDUV Essential competition. I would truly appreciate your votes. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and make sure to turn your notifications on so you'll be notified whenever I upload new videos. If you love budget friendly content like this and you have not yet subscribed, do so before you leave. Catch you in my next one. 
My name is Robin with Crafts Unleashed by Robin and in this first project I'm going to show you how to take brand new wood and make it look aged and weathered simply by using paint. To get the look I want I start off with a base layer of Waverly chalk paint in the color Cashew not going for full coverage because I want some of that natural wood to still show through. Then using the same paintbrush while the base layer was still wet, I'm just going to drag my brush along with some brown paint. For the third and final layer, I'll be using the rough side of a kitchen sponge, which I have coated with dark gray paint. And this makes a perfect streak into the wood and just gives it a more natural aged appearance. Finally, I added a mesh silk screen transfer and then it was time to attach my hangers using some screws and this is how this piece turned out and I absolutely love it. For this DIY, I'm using all Dollar Tree supplies to create this adorable farmhouse style bathtub planter. I started off with a small shelf from the Dollar Tree, covered it with a rub-on transfer, added some beads, and some little wood pots for feet. The bathtub, of course, came from the Dollar Tree toy section. I painted it white, and I'm using a black paint marker to go along the edges to give it an enameled look. To make it look like the enamel has chipped off in places, I didn't want this perfect because enamel tubs aren't perfect. I then attached the little tub to my base with some hot glue, filled it in with some succulents and plants, and you have this adorable little planter for your bathroom, or you could also store some makeup in there or soaps. If you'd like to see the full tutorial of these DIYs, please head to my YouTube channel, Crafts Unleashed by Robin, and I will meet you over there. Thank you so much for watching, and y'all go get your craft on. Bye!